Hello and welcome to Inside Line. This week we talk about mini SUVs, overpriced supercars and Ford's rugged new Aussie built SUV. But first, here's an American police car chase with a difference. Now this footage looks like any other chase you'd see on Wilder's police videos until the car stops and this guy gets out. Police said the seven year old stole the car to avoid going to church. Looks like avoiding church is at least of that kid's worries, doesn't it? Yeah, although, I mean, it's America, so maybe some NASCAR team's looking to sign him up. Or to something. be fair to the guy, he did actually seem to handle the car all right, r up until the point that he jumped out and ran home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it seems to be going around. We had a couple of weeks ago, we had the uh, kid in India driving a Ferrari, and now uh, this bloke in America wondered which country's next to, let, to lower the age of That's driving. That's right. I guess it's a case of lock up your keys. Yeah. Now, from pint-sized perps, we move to pint-sized SUVs, and it seems they've shrunk the soft rotor. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to be flooded soon with a wave of these city-sized SUVs, basically hatchbacks that have been jacked up. We've got, Ford's got one, Renault, Peugeot, and then the big ones holding tracks. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw a whole lot of SUVs based on small cars, and now they've gone one step further, which is these are the city cars, these yeah. are the tiny little titlers, and yet they're jacking them up, you know, giving them a bit of clearance, making them look like a big, tough, soft rotor, and uh, away you go. SUV sales are booming, and these city car sales are on the rise, so why not combine the two? They've got hardly any more space than a normal um, hatchback, have they? Yeah, I mean, I, th let's face it, I think these are more style over substance. I guess the good thing is it looks like a big, tough SUV, but you can still park it in a tight parking spot. Yeah. Now, from one end of the spectrum to the other end, and McLaren has dropped the price of its MP4 12C supercar by $100,000. What's going on here? Well, basically, they've said it's overpriced. They've said the whole supercar market, these what they call luxury sports, super sports cars, are overpriced in Australia. That, you know, for years, you know, these companies, your Porsches and Ferraris and McLarens, have been overcharging people. Well, I mean, we've already said Porsches already cut prices across most of their range. I mean, last year we had Rolls Royce cutting prices. So, I mean, I think they've actually cottoned on to the fact that you know people are getting sick of paying these prices. But the other thing too is. No one's paid these kind of prices, I think, in a long time. They've been getting pretty hefty discounts straight off the bat. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the sticker price hasn't resembled what you're actually buying one of these things for. They call them uh, sort of, they give you over allowances for your trade-in. They do all sorts of things to dodge you the books. But that, uh, yeah, that price isn't exactly realistic, is it? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that gets me, I think, is the blokes, I mean, the poor blokes who've just bought themselves a new McLaren, you know, they've just got overpaid by 100000 bucks. But they've, so they've generously said they will, they will give them an allowance when they do trade their one in, as long as they buy a new McLaren. So I guess the moral of the story is don't buy a Ferrari anytime soon, because they're probably going to cut the price. Well, we'll see. Finally this week, an eagle-eyed drive reader managed to snap this strange hybrid in Victoria. Well, it looks, uh, from the back it looks like a Ford Territory, but at the front it, it's a Ford Ranger. And yeah. this, this is this much talked about... The Ranger, of course, was being developed in Australia by Ford Australia, but built in Thailand for the world. And uh, it looks like Ford, as we've long suspected, is building a seven-seat SUV version of it, much like the Holden Colorado 7 or Mitsubishi Challenger. Yeah. I mean, they've always said with the, with the Ranger platform that it won't be the only body shape to come off that platform. They haven't actually come out and said, yes, we're doing a seven-seat SUV, but they've always said that they'll do more with the Ranger, and I guess this is it. But, I mean, I guess this is the problem. Where do they go with Territory next? If Falcon goes, Territory's based on Falcon, so they've got to look at something like this. Although I can't see this thing selling in the same sort of numbers as a Territory would. No, obviously, you know, Territory's more like driving a car than, you know, these things are utes with more seats. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a like-for-like -like replacement. No, it's certainly not. Well, that's it for Inside Line for this week. We'll be back again next week. But in the meantime, for all your motoring news and reviews, log on to drive.com.au.